How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here in a regular series where I like to look at all games published by a certain game company and we're going to rank them along the way. Today it's all about Data East for the NES. 22 Nintendo games published by Data East for the NES according to NESGuide.com. We're going to cover all of them in this video and that starts right now. Al Unser Jr.'s Turbo Racing for the NES. Well, it's a game you might find at conventions or at flea markets or yard sales or thrift shops, but it's another racing game. However, it's actually done pretty decently. First, you have to race to qualify, and then you do the race with other cars on the track and everything. It's easy to control. It does give you some tips along the way. There's actually a little section in there that tells you like how you should do it. Um, easy enough to change gears too. Just push up and down to change gears. It actually makes it pretty easy to go around these corners. If you're going too fast, pull back on the gear a little bit. Not too bad. If you're already going maximum power, hold up and you'll have a little turbo boost, a little I mean, it's called turbo racing, right? That's your turbo to get you into the front of the pack. There are better racing games for the NES. This one though, it's not terrible. I'm giving it a D. It's probably worth more than that, but I'm still giving it a D. Bad Dudes, an arcade favorite, now available on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And this game is, the best thing I can describe it is chunky. It doesn't flow as well as the arcade game. It doesn't animate as well. It doesn't move as smooth as the arcade game should. The jump and attack buttons are flip-flopped. B should never be jump. I mean, it's still okay. It's still bad dudes. It still gives you the, you know, unlimited credits. So you'll be it the first time you ever play it. But bad dudes is plural. Bad dudes. There's two of them. And although there's a two-player option in this game, it's still a one-player game. It's not even a two-player, it's two-player alternating. But when you see the other animation and stuff in this game, two-player may be too much for this game to handle. At least if it was two-player simultaneous, it would be a B. I'm giving it a C, and I'm gonna be generous about giving it a C. Still a fun game, I still play it, but the Nintendo version, the NES version, not the optimal way to play it. I'm bad. Battle Chess could make a comeback with the Queen's Gambit now streaming on Netflix, not sponsored or endorsed. No, I like chess. I grew up playing chess for fun. I don't know the strategies. I don't know all that, you know, stuff to it. I just know how to play chess and I just kind of play it along the way to the best that I can. I'm not very good at it. Now there's lots of chess options, but battle chess, well, that sounds like cool because it's like not only you're playing chess, but with actual animations and you actually see them battle out for the squares and everything like that. You already know who's gonna win based on how you play the game, but it gives you a little bit of animation. But this game runs so sluggishly slow. My goodness, this game, it's like watching molasses migrate or something. Oh my God. It's chess. It's chess and it plays like chess, but so, so slow. I need quick action, fast paced. There's that scene in the Queen's Gambit where they're doing like the, like the rapid chess, like the rapid fire chess. You're not going to find that in this game. It goes so slow. Thank you for having the animations, but if you could overclock it and have it move like 19,000 times the speed, I think it'll be a little bit better. I'm giving this game an F. Too slow, man, too slow. Bo Jackson's Baseball, because in that early night, late 80s, early 90s, Bo Jackson uh, was everywhere. Um, had the sponsorship going on. Um, he played baseball and football. So baseball in that season, football in the other season. Um, there was the Bo Nose ad campaign and like that. And the Bo Jackson baseball looks on the outside like it could be a really good baseball game. It looks pretty technical as far as an NES game goes. You know, pitching is pretty cool. You know, pitching's pretty decent. When the ball's in play, um, you know, like catching the ball and all that, throwing it to the base you want to throw it to, it's not bad, but when you're at the bat and you're swinging at the baseball, it's so hard to tell when it's time to swing because it has that little extra animation. So it's not like quick action, pow, pow. You know, you hit the button and you swing the bat as fast as you can. It's not like that. It's almost like you have to predict where the ball's gonna be and at that point it's too late. Like you're swinging, you're swinging for balls that are gonna be, that are totally gonna be balls, not even in your strike zone, but it's too late, you already swung the bat. And that's why I'm giving this game a D. I like baseball games, I do. This one's really hard to play though, because of that reason. Looks great, it's not for me. Breakthrough is a tough one. Breakthrough, 
Uh, again, a, another game based on the arcade, now available on the NES. Um, it's like, I want to like this game a lot. It's a side-scrolling, you're always moving, you can speed up and slow down, you're not on the clock or anything like that, so you don't have to just race through everything, you don't have to. In fact, you shouldn't, because you're gonna end up crashing a lot if you do, <laughs> because things just show up, and then you have to deal with them, like mines, and boulders, and uh, you know, I have to wait for the boulder to hit the ground, and then shoot it, and you can run over it and all that. But the problem is, then there's like these areas that you have to jump, and you jump really weird, like you jump like with your car going straight up in the air, and you have to be going a certain speed to jump over these things. And if you're not going fast enough, you're not, you're gonna miss it. You're just flat out gonna miss it. So you're always in a struggle of, you need to slow down to see what you're shooting at, and you need to speed up to make these jumps. And at that point, it might already be too late. Rough game on this one. Um, the arcade game's pretty decent. I'm giving this one a D. Just because it's so, it's so hard to manipulate, not manipulate, it's so hard to, uh, see how you're gonna go or it's so hard to find out exactly where you need to be there's no warning signs or anything like that so you just gotta go for it and just predict where things are gonna be we have burger time which is an all-time classic burger time one of my favorite arcade games when i was growing up and the nes version actually plays pretty decently true story that nobody asked for Burger Time is the first ever NES game I ever played. They had this Nintendo kiosk display for the holiday season, and they had one of those units that had like 20 games you can select from. I was like, oh, Burger Time, I've heard of that. Let's see what it looks like on the NES. I was like, oh my God, it looks great. Now, back then I thought it looked like the arcade game. Looking at it now, it totally doesn't. <laughs> but it's still a great game, and it's still a lot of fun. Classic arcade action. Um, I'm gonna put this one as a B, only because it's still kind of janky, but it plays really well, eh, for early Nintendo games especially. We have Captain America and the Avengers. You gotta understand, this is like way over 20 years before the Avengers uh, came out in theaters or anything like that, especially with Captain America. Um, in fact, the beginning part is like Vision and Iron Man are captured and you are Captain America <laughs> and you gotta rescue these guys. Now, in the modern day cinema Marvel universe, whatever, uh, <laughs> it would be a little bit different of a storyline. I'm sure you probably play as Iron Man and rescue everyone else. However, uh, this game, again, it's Captain America, you got Hawkeye, you got Vision, Iron Man, playable later on, right? Red Skull, Ultron's in this one as well um, as the villains, and it actually plays like a really good game. It plays like a really good NES game. This is the kind of NES game I look for as far as like my action platformer style games or goes. It has that kind of Bionic Commando look to it with the map and everything like that, and I'm totally okay with that. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this game. I uh, like it quite a bit. I'm giving, I'm giving this game an A. It's a very solid Nintendo game. I remember seeing Caveman games advertised as Caveman Uglympics, and I was disappointed to find out it was just simply called Caveman Games, because Caveman Uglympics is a brilliant pun. I really, and I love plays on words. I love puns. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's, it's based on a PC game, right? Uh, and it features six exciting levels of gameplay. You have clubbing, which is your player versus player. You have to club them. Now you can either do taps, multiple taps to kind of get them to go uh, to the other side, lose their health, or you can sacrifice uh, the big attacks, but you're leaving yourself wide open when you do that. So you gotta be careful about that. This one's, I mean, it's all right. You have the mate toss, which was probably my favorite because you have, it's like the hammer throw, but you grab this lady by the ankles and um, I'm assuming she's just a completely random woman that has to be walking, up, walking by and you're gonna, you're gonna toss her as far as you can. You wind her up and you swing and you just let her go and, and she goes for it. And the funny thing is, if you don't do a good job, she will not be impressed with you. That's not who she's looking for. And the best part is if you do a great job, she does this funky chicken sea walk dance or something that I'm telling you, you will not see these dance moves in electro swing tutorial videos anytime soon. That she's getting down and she's getting crunk with it. Although crunk is probably the name of one of the characters in this game. Mate toss, I love the mate toss, my favorite part. There's the dino vault, which makes sense. You have to run and then kind of pull vault over a dinosaur. And if you don't make it, uh, the dinosaur will eat you and he'll just chew you and spit you out. But you can try again, that's fine. Dino race, eh, it's just, it's a, it's a dino race. It's, you're racing and you have to jump over the things. Nah, not, nothing too fancy there. There's the fire start, which could be a sport. I mean, I'd love to see competition fire starting like this, because you have to rub your sticks together and you have to, like, blow to make the smoke rise and have the fire start and everything like that. Um, but you can't blow too much or use too much of your air, because then you get lightheaded and dizzy and then you're kind of out of commission for a little while. Uh, a lot of technique with this one. Now, this one actually takes a little bit, but 
it's still kind of fun. And then finally, the saber race, where you have to outrun a saber tooth tiger. That's that's not an Olympic story, that's surviving. <laughs> you don't, don't, don't want to get caught. Uh, but you can do that by running, jumping. Um, if you're next to your opponent, you can kind of like toss them back. You give them Irish rip behind you to, um, you know, get yourself in the lead and kind of throw them in the, the saber tooth tiger way and all that. It sounds like a lot of fun on the surface. It's incredibly, the controls are difficult to manipulate in this game. So as much fun as I want to have with this game, I'm giving it a D because man, if the controls were better, a little bit more streamlined, I think it'd be a really a lot of fun. I love the track and field type games. Uh, this one's just, it's just clunky. Cobra Command is a personal favorite of mine. I absolutely love Cobra Command. Based on the arcade game, Loosely. It's almost like inspired by the arcade game, much like Bionic Commando, Strider. Uh, there are so many other arcade games that when they brought them out to the NES, they changed them just a little bit to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more longevity, instead of just having like, you know, how many lives continues, beat the game and all that, you're done. Um, so they had a little twist to it. So this game plays like a shooter. It's like a side-scrolling shooter. However, it does have the element, not only do you rescue people, which is kind of fun to look out for them and you hear them cry for help in a very Nintendo-based way, but then you can also go to like the enemy bases and then like land on the enemy depot and you get new weapons and new upgrades. And every level has these. So you can upgrade your engines, upgrade your firepower, uh, your armor, your shield, your, you know, how you manipulate, how you move and all that. That's what I loved about this game. I love games that give you these upgrades. And this was, man, this was such a fun game for me because I love shooters, but then the upgrade system uh, just gave it that extra level of awesomeness. Huge, huge fan of Cobra Command. I'm giving this one personally, I'm giving it an A. I love this game. The game that's more fun to say than it is to play, Dash Galaxy in the Alien Asylum. <laughs> uh, it starts out like a block pushing game where you just have to push the blocks and get to, um, you know, the area where uh, the actual gameplay part of it is. And then here, it looks like MS-DOS. I mean, what's going on? This is like, good lord. So you pick up all the items and that's going to give you the stuff that you need to carry on to the next level and move on and, you know, hopefully do better, I guess. The running, the jumping, the climbing, uh, the momentum of how you move and how you run and um, you, you only have, you have a health bar and the more you're touching an enemy, he's not gonna die. He's just gonna keep taking damage until you die. You know, that's, come on. No, it's, a, it's an F. I, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna kid anyone. It is almost unplayable. I want to like this game, I really do. And I come back to it every once in a while to say like, well, I mean, I can, I can, I can I'll, I'll play it with a different mindset. And then as soon as I start playing it, it's the same mindset. Man, it's, <laughs> you can take a game that has, you know, it could be good, but when the controls are not, man, it's not playable. Heavy Barrel, based on the arcade game and plays, guess what? Like the arcade game. How, go figure, right? Fun game has that overhead shooting style, your commando, your mercs, stuff like that. Uh, the gimmick behind this one is you find these keys everywhere. You keep finding these keys and they have these little lock boxes. Now the lockbox might be points, might be grenades, might be a weapon upgrade, which hopefully it is. There's a lot of great weapons in this game, flamethrowers, you know, rocket launchers, stuff like that too. But the game's called Heavy Barrel, and sometimes in these boxes you'll find a piece of the Heavy Barrel. That's your gun. That's like the big gun, the main gun in this game. And when you get all the pieces of Heavy Barrel, you get to actually use this giant gun that just obliterates everyone in this path. <laughs> um, usually it takes a few stages to get through before you can actually unlock Heavy Barrel. Uh, but once you do, um, it's such a it's such an accomplishment, and um, and love this game. It's uh, I I think it's one of the better shooters on the NES. So thank you, Data East, for making a kind of you know as true as you could to the arcade port. I got no smoke with this game at all. This game is definitely an A to me. So they made Joe and Mac for the NES. Now, Joe and Mac was the first Super Nintendo game I ever rented. So I have a lot of fond memories with Joe and Mac. And it wasn't until later on, I was like, oh, they made an NES version too? Huh, I'll check that out. And guess what? The NES version actually plays really well too. Now it's not exactly the same. There's not like the same kind of platforms. You know, the, the levels aren't as creative. Uh, the stages are kind of boring, actually. And the boss battles, mm, I mean, they could be better. Um, it's not It's not exactly the same, but it's, a decent game if you look at it by itself. If, you, if you've if you never played the arcade version, you've never played the Super Nintendo version, anything like that, um, but you're going to it as a, hey, this is a pretty decent Nintendo game. It's just that, it's a pretty decent Nintendo game. I'll give it a B because it's actually pretty decent. It's just not as cool as the Super Nintendo version. Still not bad. Stop. 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 
Karate Champ, fun arcade game for its time, but the arcade game was Twin Stick. And the NES version is you have your A and B buttons and then your D-pad. So depending on what button you press and then what direction you press, you'll do a different attack. I can never remember what attack does what. Uh, sometimes you end up um, attacking behind you because that's the move. So you really have to know what moves do what to get a great score in this game. The hit detection in this game is ridiculously terrible. There are times where I swear I attack the guy and then he gets me. And of course he gets me because he's the, he's the computer and not the me trying to beat this game, right? It's almost like the judge didn't even see it, and there's like, I saw nothing, but you hit him in the face, so you're good. You know what, I wanna love this game, I do, but again, with the hit detection not where it should be, and the controls are super confusing, I still have fond memories of this game, so in my book, in my opinion, I'm giving this a C. You'll probably give it a D, you might even give it an F. Hey, you might even give it an A, I don't know. I'm giving it a C. Boy. Karnov is the Dark Souls of the NES generation. This game, uh, so, so many people talk about how difficult Ghost and Goblin is. I talk about how difficult Karnov is because enemies show up out of nowhere. Once you fall, if you don't jump off of a building and you fall, you'll just fall. You can't control, you can't move left or right or anything. You just have to let fate take its course. Tons of items, including like bombs, ladders, jumping things. You get like a mask later on to help you swim better. If you don't have that, then that swimming level is almost impossible. And on top of that, this game is almost impossible. I beat it a couple of times using a Game Genie. It goes on far longer than it should, which you would think is a good thing for a Nintendo game. But man, the level of difficulty, I don't know how people beat this game without it. And I'm decent at NES games, but not like this, right? So if you've beaten it, more power to you. A lot of people have a lot of fond memories about Karnov, and I do too, but this game is NES hard. I'm giving it a C because this game the game should be enjoyed, not frustrating. This game frustrates me. When I play this game, I usually play the first couple of levels. I'll play like level one, level two. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. I, I better stop wiping my head. Kid Nicky is another fun arcade game coming out for the NES. It has the terrible English as far as translation goes. I thought it was a fun game. Uh, you have like the spiky haired ninja kid and you um, you twirl your sword, which I thought was super cool. I thought it was like, the you know, for some reason, I thought I love the fact that you're twirling your sword. So as long as they're within proximity, uh, they're gonna die. Graphics mm, aren't the best, but neither were the arcade games either. Levels are creative enough. The bot, I mean, the enemies you fight are kind of like shy guy with the masks and all that. I mean, they're they're fine. They're they're kind of predictable, which is good because in this game, uh, you like predictability because sometimes you know you don't you don't want to lose any less lives than you have to. The bosses, however, make it up. The bosses are fun. The bosses are creative. What is going on with this guy's mouth when he blows his uh, his breath here? That's <clears throat> right. Fun creative bosses. I like this game a lot. I'll put it as a B. It's not great, it's not perfect, uh, but I think it's a lot of fun. Rampage, another favorite. Man, uh, so much fun playing Rampage. Uh, with my friends, tons of levels, different cities. I think Yakima, Washington is one of the cities on here, which was my hometown, so happy about that. The arcade game had a third character, the wolf, which is too bad that it's not there, but I never really play as that character anyway, so it didn't bother me too much. But I mean, what was not to love? You, you play as kind of assumedly the bad guy, destroying buildings, super cool. Unfortunately, the downfall for me with this game is that it's kind of the same level like a hundred times in a row. The buildings are in a different location, sure. Some levels have, you know, trolleys or taxis or some levels have a bridge. Those things aside, it's a, it's a lot of, it's very monotonous. But it was also during a time when a lot of video games were monotonous. So, I mean, you, know, you gotta look at games like Space Invaders or Pac-Man. Yeah, it's the same thing every time, right? Now, the later on Rampage games, they had different things going on for them too, but this is the OG. This is the one that started it all. Played a ton of this on the NES. Huge fan of Rampage. I'm gonna give it an A because just, Fun game, great memories. I could put it as a B just because of the monotonous, but come on, it's Rampage. It's, it's Rampage. I'm giving it an A. Ring King, unfortunately, is not Mike Tyson's punch out. After Mike Tyson's punch out, we're like, we want more boxing games like this. So you look at the other boxing games, just in case, and this game doesn't play like that. And it does a weird rotation thing, like when you rotate like above them, below them, to their side, you don't do any diagonal stuff. I can almost only play this game side by side. When they go around me, I have to go in front of them, just so we're back you know, side by side, so I can see where my punches are connecting. The graphics are interesting. Uh, gameplay, hmm, I mean, it's a boxing game. I lose way more health on myself, just throwing, throwing boxing punches that never connect. So I'm going to give this game a D, only because 
Man, that's just not great. It's, as far as a boxing game goes, it could have been a lot better. I can see where they're trying to go with this game. Didn't work out. And do we need to mention the in-between bouts cutscene? I mean, come on, we can't not. Robocop, the arcade game, was a lot of fun. Loved Robocop, the arcade game. Robocop, the NES game, it's fun. It's not the same, but it's fun on its own merit. It's fun on its own level. I think I wanted that arcade experience again, and the Nintendo game has, has its own thing going on. I mean, that this game is actually developed by Ocean, believe it or not. Not the greatest uh, company in the world when it comes to video games, right? But the Nintendo game, actually, this one's not so bad. Published by Data East, I'll give it a C. It's not great, but it's actually not bad. Robocop 2, also developed by Ocean, feels like an Ocean game. Like, this game should have been Ocean, right? Like, ne like leave Data East out of it, <laughs> man. Just, just keep, let Ocean's name be on this game for Robocop 2. Uh, not great. Um, I'll give it a D. It's still playable. Uh, it's just a yikes. Side pocket, digital pool, it's fine. The levels of where you can shoot your cue, like when you actually like hit the ball to get, see where it's gonna go. There's sometimes I wanna get it just a little bit of a different angle, but it's like this and then like this. It's like, no, I want, I want that, but there is no option. It's like, it's very specific around the ball and that's what throws me off uh, with this game. I can't get it as exactly perfect as I want it, but when it comes to digital pool, I actually had a lot of fun playing this uh, back in the day. It was one of the games I had uh, when I was growing up. Decent, decent pool game. I like, I like doing the nine, the nine ball thing. Um, I'll give it a C. It's fine. Tag Team Wrestling. I love wrestling. This game made by Technos. Technos, the makers of WrestleFest. This game is unfortunately one of the worst wrestling games on the NES. Like, for real, seriously, seriously. Only because, I mean, it was made a long time ago when they're still kind of discovering, like, how do, you, how do we make a wrestling game? There wasn't really like a, a guideline or anything like that. How do we make a wrestling game? So this game went a different direction of, let's lock up, like, let's hit them and lock up, and then you choose from a menu. Like, you have to like push up and down and all that to like cycle through different moves you can do, and then do them. You have a very limited amount of time where you can do this and it's really difficult to pull off this game again almost unplayable i'm giving this oh i'm giving it an f i have to it's and i feel bad about it but it's just it's not it's it's so difficult to play you can kind of get into the flow of things but you shouldn't force yourself to really we have werewolf for the nes and this game a lot of people love this game i found out later in life I thought it was okay. Um, never owned it. I did rent it a couple of times. And I like the fact that you can play as the character, like the human, and then you can turn into a werewolf. And of course, you just want to be the werewolf the whole time. You don't, you don't no, I, there's other games I can play as humans. <laughs> I don't play as a werewolf. The game's called Werewolf. I don't play as a werewolf. And it's fine. And it's, it's better than average. And a lot of people love this game. There's a lot of memories behind it. I think it's okay. I'm going to put it as a B. I mean, I think it's really, really good. It's just missing something. I don't know what that something is. I honestly don't know. Maybe you tell me. This is a pretty standard set of games here. I didn't have any S tiers. Rampage could have been, with my own nostalgia, Cobra Command could have been. I've covered so many other published games from other companies for Nintendo as well as Super Nintendo, so I got a whole playlist you can binge right now. Covering games published from Taito next week. Should be a lot of fun. <laughs> 